A question I often get asked is how to get more speed. So we're going to look at how we can improve our club head speed while still maintaining a strike and we're going to do it with the driver. Because this isn't just a golf club, it could also be your best training aid. I'm sure you've seen lots of these um, speed training systems on the market, speed sticks, things like this, which are they're all well and good, but they don't have this on the end. They've not got the club head. So it's a very different task when you actually have to hit a golf ball. So we can improve our speed and they're all very good training systems and I'm not for or against. All I'm looking at is how can we improve our speed with the driver? Yes, there is a transfer, a training effect from physical exercises through to the golf swing, but how can we do it ourselves without going out and having to buy extra equipment or training protocols when we already have what we need? What we need to do is just learn how to use it better. And we've got to think about how are we actually improving our performance with this? Well, it's improving our performance with the body and it's recognizing our form to the performance. And so where do we get the speed from? Well, it's force generation and force transfer. If you were to throw a ball with your feet planted and just try and throw a ball as far as you can, you're gonna get a decent distance, okay? You're gonna, you can probably throw it quite a distance. As soon as you're allowed to move your feet and use momentum, you can increase the distance. So. Let's have a look at how we use this to speed up our swing. Hi guys, we're really excited to be back at the West Hearts Golf Club for our two day golf schools. We've got a school on the 13th and 14th, which sold out. So due to demand, we opened another school on the 15th and 16th for six people. Three have already sold, so we've got three spaces left. It's two days of intensive coaching, 11 hours of coaching with myself and the team, getting to grips with everything GRF, plus a bonus of our on-course tour experience with Mark Foster and David Griffiths. So you get to transfer the skills from the two days onto the course with myself as well, helping you along the way. So guys, it really is a fantastic two days. Three places left. If you're interested, follow the link in description and we hope to see you there. Now we've got to move this as fast as possible, which means these joints, the wrists, the shoulders, the elbow, particularly the trail, trail elbow, We've got to be familiar with using them at the speed we need to increase the overall club head speed. But it's when we go further down through the torso, through to the pelvis, through to the hips, the ankles and the feet. It's this end that we need to recognise in terms of force generation, speed production, things like that. Because often this gets overlooked because we can't even see our feet. They're in our shoes. So we're not even aware of our joint actions. If we can't push off, at the speed we need to, we can't maintain our low point for long enough. Because as soon as we start pushing off, the low point's gonna start rising, it's gonna start moving back towards us, it's gonna start essentially lifting. And that's why you see the long drive guys have really high T pegs, because they're using such a fast, high magnitude of force that their arc height is lifted off the ground, and they need the big T pegs because they are jumping. They are using their vertical jumps. That's okay for us, but how does that transfer then to an iron? Because we've got to be able to do this with the ball on the ground as well. So we've got to be able to generate speed whilst being able to control our low point. And it's that that I want to focus on. What we've got to recognize first is how do we move to do this? So we're going to take our shoes off because we can't see what we need to with our shoes on. So most of your life, training your golf swing, you spent looking at your hands, your wrists, the club, your hips here, elbows, shoulders, in the mirror. What we miss is what's happening down here, and this part of your body has got the most bones and joints than any other part. And that's because it's for mobility, speed. All the muscles, there's not a lot of mus muscle mass in the foot at all. The muscle mass is up here. So this is driving the foot but the foot is acting at high speed. All those joints enable the foot to move quickly. And it's the speed, agility, quickness aspect of our foot function that we're gonna look at. How fast can we actually interact with the ground, action these joints, which are gonna create that extensor chain? Because if you're gonna jump, you need to flex and extend. If you're gonna use the ground, we've gotta be flexing and extending. Whether that's our primary mode of force is not 
that relevant at this moment in time, but we've got to be able to push off the ground. So what we're gonna look at is the toe joint. Now, not all of us have got a functional range, okay? So we need over 30 degrees ideally. That's the angle between the toe and the ground, the range of the hallux. So we're looking for a push off. If we haven't got that, some people have got fused metatarsal joints, that's no, no problem. You'll be going to the ankle more. So the body bypasses and goes to the next available joint. So it's not just a triple extension in the golf swing. It's not just ankle, knee, hip. It's toe, ankle, knee, hip. It's a trip. It's not just a triple extension, it's quadruple, particularly with your lead foot. Because when we load into the lead foot, we move in our low point and then we can push off and you use that load. So the speed's important, guys. What I suggest you do first is just stand, feet close together, and just stand up onto your toes. Can you do it? Can you raise up onto your toes? And can you do it quick? Okay, can you do it slow? Okay, now keeping your heels on the floor, bend your knees, and now extend your knees, and that's the ankles. That's the knees, the hips, and the ankles. Okay, that's okay, but what we're looking for ideally are the toes to be involved. So if you bend your knees and hips now, ankles will bend automatically, now spring off your toes to extend everything. And that's the chain we're looking for. Okay, you can even see there's a, a little push off, a little jump. You may even leave the ground. Letting the legs fully lock out. This is where we're gonna go for the speed. Now, how fast can we move? using this chain. Now in golf, obviously we are shifting, we're rotating, and we're flexing and extending. So we're just focusing on this element first, and then we can introduce everything else. So I've got a furniture slider here, okay? You don't need one, okay? You could just get a piece of cardboard uh, and a slippery surface, laminate flooring, or what you could do is just move your foot and slide it on the floor, okay? to start with, but I suggest you do have some interface between you and the ground because you can actually push it as opposed to lifting. What I want you to do is stand on the slider with the balls of the foot, so the forefoot, flex your knees and your hips, okay, and just stand up and slide your foot forward using your toe, using that toe, so the heels raise, okay, and how fast can you move it? Okay, it's not about how far you go, because that's going to slow you down. It's not always about the range you're moving, it's about the speed. How fast can you push that away with your toe? How fast can you push it to the side? So this is recruiting this chain here. What's driving the foot is the hip complex here. You're recruiting the glute, the hamstring, the calf, the big toe joint to push and keep the pressure on the slider. Bang. Just extend it, okay? Make sure you don't, make sure it's a safe environment and the slide doesn't go firing off like that. Just making sure that you're recognizing the speed, okay? What we're gonna do then is we're gonna load it a little bit. Now to load it, we're gonna take that away. We're gonna bring the club in, so be careful what's around you guys if you're swinging inside. What we're gonna do is start with our feet together and we're gonna take a step and pop. Can we pop at the same rate we felt with the slider? Because now we're loading that lead side. So now there's a different demand on it. So starting with the feet together, just making a few little easy swings. And when you feel the moment's right, as you swing back, you just drop to your lead side. And then you just spring off that toe. What we wanna feel for this exercise is ourself unweight off the floor. That means we actually feel like we've got airborne before we actually hear the swish of the club because the swish of the club is the snap release of the wrists. So can we actually feel airborne and then let the wrist release? Okay, that's now enabling us to transfer force through the chain because we've got time. If we're an upper body swinger, heavily dominant with the upper body, we may not even have time to use the legs. We may have released the golf club early, so there's no real necessity to use the, the lower body. What I want to do is just explore, push it, using torque. 
Okay, so when we push in a certain direction, what's going to happen is potentially we would create torque and then we need to release that. So it's like we are using the ground to wind the body and then we're pushing off the ground to transfer that through the body to the club. Now we need the mechanism to transfer it through the body to give the body the opportunity to actually create it in the downswing. If the body doesn't have a mechanism to actually utilize that torque, it's got no reason to actually create it in the first place. So we're actually reverse engineering from the moment we're transferring it through the body and then we're giving the body an opportunity to create these forces. So what I want you to do is explore pushing off the floor and ripping the foot, sliding the foot back. So feet together, little step, just like we did with the driver, dropping, and now we're pushing the foot back, straight back, not away this towards the body this way, away from the target, literally straight back. This isn't to say we have to do this in the golf swing, but by pushing the foot back, we're actually pushing forward. And it's this force that creates the motion that we see with the leg going back. And what this is gonna let us do is transfer that force to rotate the hips and the pelvis at the speed we need and at the time we need so we can actually sequence the body before we even need to release the club. With the golf club now, remember this is our training stick, little swings, half three quarter, little step and then rip the foot back with the push off. Little tiny step, drop and pop it. Notice the drop happens on the back swing here. So we're getting used to rotating the torso back as we drop. And then spring and let the foot rip back, straight back. So if you're a guy who finishes like this, okay, can't really extend, lower body just can't work fast enough, we're probably still loaded into the floor, having to hit it hard with the upper body, early releasing to get the speed in time. Problem is we're never going to be able to recruit the lower body because it's so far away from what we recognise. The speed we're operating at is so far away from what we need. We're probably never gonna to get to that place. But this exercise is gonna let you, this little protocol of exercise is gonna let you experience not just the movement, but the speed you need too. So then you can start to transfer it through to the ball. And I'd suggest hitting shots on the driving range without your shoes on, so you can actually feel it. It doesn't have to be full out, but it's recognising the speed. So once you've hit a couple of shots, we can start to introduce more of a lateral to help us with the timing. And this is where we take it to the next level, where we start to bring in a step away from the target. So now we would introduce a drop and pop on the way back. So the feet would be together in the starting place, swinging the club, and when the moment feels right, we take a small step back and drop and pop to swing back. So we're swinging forward. When we decide to go, we've got to make a conscious decision that this is the go time. As soon as you swing the club forward, you drop away and stand up to swing the club back. So we're throwing the club back. Now this is loading us perfectly for the drop. So when we marry the two together, can start to really ramp up the speed because now we're introducing more lateral. This extension in the backswing is going to let us drop. We're accentuating the ranges a little bit. We're ramping up the speed and we've got the mechanism for the speed because when we load that lead side, we're comfortable using it at speed because we know where the movement's coming from. Small steps, it's more about the drop and pop and just letting yourself spring into a finish. I made a mistake on that one, I hit the ground and that's adding distortion. We want to feel the swing weight. We're not intending to hit the ground with the driver, so make sure it's in the air, make sure you hear the swish, because when and where you hear the swish is really important. We want that swish to be really late on the up. You can see we're starting to ramp the speed up. Then it's time to bring the ball in. Have a little practice swing first. and then commit to it in the swing. Probably 
two best drives I've hit for, for a while. And funnily enough, my attention's not on the golf club, it's not on my wrists, it's not on my, where I'm swinging the golf club. It's on how I'm using my lower body, how I'm interacting with the ground, which creates an opportunity to sequence, to create a more efficient release, more club face, path, control, because we're not heavily dominant and reliant on this release, which throws everything out and actually denies us of the power. So the source of the power is more effective, more efficient, and therefore the rest of the body can do its job, creating that speed, not compromising control over the strike. So give it a go, guys. It's quite complex, that protocol. Take your time with it, be disciplined with your practice. Free the body up, express yourself, let your body go. You might just be surprised at what happens. So guys, let me know how you get on and leave your comments below.